It's about time to get my headlights running on my 911 here so I could do more interesting drives, especially at night. Now, to get this going, I need to repair the factory harness number one. The factory harness, to be honest, is a little weak for the headlights. There are no relays in it from the factory, and it actually can't keep up with today's light bulbs. Like the H4, there's halogen and xenon options, and this is a resto mod, so I want to use the best of the best. So in addition to repairing the harness, I want to show you how to augment the harness with relays and also increased wire size so we can go all the way up to like 150 watts if we want to. Stay tuned. Garage time. This is the section that goes inside the headlight bucket and you can't even really make out the color of these wires. This one is completely fried. I think it used to be brown, I'm not sure. That's probably the ground wire. This yellow wire is toast, it's really crispy. The blue and the blue green or black green aren't too bad, but some of them are cut as well. So that's not good. This side here has some you know, poor splicing in it just things taped up. So I don't know if these things made contact before or something. Bad terminals, everything needs to be fixed. So here we go again, fixing junk. Here's what we found so far. This is some pretty heavy sheathing here, covering some pretty heavy gauge wires, heavy grounds. And then I noticed right here, this is where all the grounds connect internally to the harness. And this was covered up in tape. That does not look like it's a connector that's been cut. That's just a splice to put all the grounds in, in one place. And this wire here is clearly cut. This is the one that probably goes to the body. So that'll have to be repaired. And yeah, everything on this side, it doesn't look too overheated. Okay, in addition to repairing the harness, I'm actually gonna make some improvements too. I'm gonna put the headlight relays in, but I'm gonna hide them inside the headlight buckets. I wanna be able to get 12 volts right to the headlights without going through the headlight switch and losing a bunch of voltage that way. So I did something similar with the starter solenoid. There are some aftermarket kits that do this. A lot of times it's not always the cleanest insulation. You have a lot of relays right there next to the fuse block. And to me, it just makes it too crowded. Uh, there's also a fuse panel that has the blade type fuses that has like a, a relay, uh, headlight relay soldered into like a circuit board. And that's a good product too. A little spendy for me and a little bit unnecessary in my opinion, if you just, if you just keep the fuse block clean, you really don't need all that LED circuit board stuff. Plus I like the relays, like I said, to be hidden out of the way. This meter will beep if you connect both sides. So if I connect one side to here, and this is a black purple wire right here, it goes right near the fuse panel. Yeah, we'll have to see what we can do to salvage that wire. Either have to pull a new one all the way through. It's just wires wrapped around each other and it's corroded and it's just, that's what causes a lot of heat. So we wanna undo this. See how easy that was to take apart? It's not good. It's got damage on the inside too. Okay, there it is. So really burnt on this end. A little burn there in the middle, not as bad. 
and then closer to the fuse, it doesn't look too bad either. This is just a little burned right here on the fuse part. So best to replace the whole thing. Okay, the next one to replace is this ground wire. I'm replacing this bad blue white wire with another wire from a different wire harness. Thanks to Juan Carlos, he had sent me some wire harnesses and I am definitely putting them to use. I've repaired all the wires on the, I guess this is the passenger side, everything's good, but I'm going to be adding an extra 12 gauge wire. That's gonna power the relays for both high and low beams. And like I said, I'm gonna put the relays in the headlight bucket. This is going to get power directly to the headlights via the relay. That's gonna bypass the turn signal switch and also the headlight switch. And it also is gonna allow me to run the higher wattage bulbs. I can go 100 watt bulbs for the H4s, which I'll eventually get, and that'll be plenty of light. So this is a repair and an upgrade. Now I just need to put some sleeve on this, and I'm not gonna use that original sleeve because I had to slice it. So I just have some PVC sleeve left over from my 356, and I have two sizes. So I'll try the smaller one, but if I have trouble getting it on, I'm gonna have to go to the bigger one. Seems like it might work. It's gonna be a tight fit. It's way easier to pull through, so I'm gonna replace this with the string. Pull it through. And now I got a pull wire pulling this through. Should make it a little easier. See it going right over. Okay, that's gonna do it for the passenger side. Now let's do the drivers. Drivers got some of the same problem. This is gonna be a shorter run, which will make it easier but we got several burnt wires. At least three wires replaced on this side. This harness is fully rebuilt now. Um, good as new, potentially even better than new because it has the extra power wires for the relay. Those are upsized, 12 gauge, both on the positive and on the ground. It's not exactly uh, the same as the factory. I use some cloth tape here as opposed to the vinyl or PVC tape the factory did, but it's uh, repaired. And let me show you the stuff I took out. Here's some of the bad stuff that was taken out of here. Some of it doesn't look too bad, probably on camera, but really it's the most, most of the damage was in the headlight bucket area. And that's because that's the hottest area. The, the, the actual bulbs create heat in the headlight bucket. And that, along with the wires being too small, basically caused them to fail. I think Porsche basically did the bare minimum on wire size. They could have gone a little bit bigger, especially when people move to the stronger bulbs, like the H4, the halogen bulbs for sure will fry these wires. That's why I went with 12 gauge. These are uh, 14 gauge or smaller. I'm gonna terminate these after I push it through the car, but here's that cloth tape. You can see it looks a little different than the vinyl tape that was on there previously. And then on the ends, I use heat shrink so it doesn't unravel. And then this side, I need to figure out how to redo some of that floss material. 
I'm gonna redo that once it's on the car too. I think this harness here, the smaller one is for the fog lights, which I don't have. If you're interested in some of the details on how I splice the wires, I use open barrel connectors. They actually come on a strip like this and you just break them off and I have some pretty nice ratcheting crimp tools that do the correct um, roll into the wires. So it's very, very strong. Um, there's no resistance due to solder. It doesn't make the wires brittle. And then I put heat shrink over it with adhesive in the heat shrink. Let's put it in the car. I'm not sure what these wires are for. This is right by the latch. That's a black and a brown with the spade terminals. I think it might be for the washer pump, which I don't have. So I'm just gonna coil these up. If you know what these are, let me know. I finally got this buttoned up, at least for now. Uh, a couple things I'm not super thrilled with. I had to go with a generic light socket here. This is kind of a low duty one. I'm gonna change this in the future with something that's probably ceramic for higher temperature and little heavier gauge wires. And then I can do the color coding correctly. This just came all black, but I can create my own sockets with the correct color wires and so forth. And then this is the relay for the low beams. This can just get tucked back here, maybe taped on to the light bucket somewhere. Uh, and things are kind of mostly tidied up. That grommet right there is kind of loose. The other thing is these are just heat shrinked here. I ran out of the correct connector. This is the original connector here. It's just a flat blade butt connector. And that would, it's normally what would go right here. So I ordered some more of these. Next time I do the H4 headlights, I'll just replace those with the, the correct sleeve here. Also, if you guys are looking really carefully, you'll notice that I don't have the high beam wire connected. That's because it's gonna need another relay for the high beams. This relay only turns on the low beams. There'll be another relay for high beams. Some of the wiring is shared, so it won't get too crowded but in total, there'll be four relays for these headlights. There's plenty of room back there for all that wiring. All right, let's test it out. There's the headlight and left blinker. It looks like the running light's on. Let's turn that off. Yeah, running lights and uh, low beams. So that's it. Now I gotta do the other side. It's definitely gonna be dark in here, but that is my switch right there. So it's just a rocker switch. Lights off, lights on. So I don't know if you can see out there, but lights off, lights on. That switch is temporary until I get my actual headlight switch, which belongs over here. And this is where my turn signal switch is at the moment. All very temporary. The other thing I wanted to show for you guys or check for myself even is the current going through the original headlight wire, which is basically a signal now to the relay. And then the current that's going through the relay wire, that's wired direct to the battery. So. Yeah, 0.13 amps. And now the headlight's on and I have it to the wire that goes right to the relay. And this is now reading upside down 2.6 amps. 
So the majority of the current goes in the new wire that I installed into the relay. And I do have the original headlight switch. Here it is. It's going to be probably on another episode because this thing is completely frozen and I don't want to damage it internally by forcing it. I think I'm going to disassemble it and try to remanufacture this switch. These are expensive, like $650 from Porsche, uh, which is another reason why you want to use the relay because it takes a lot of the current, like I just showed you, and moves it through the actual relay instead of the switch. And so that's, that's the idea there. And yes, the H4s are coming. I'm not sure which bulb I'm gonna use yet. I don't know if I just wanna use the standard bulb or you can go all the way up to like 100, even 130 watts. And so the wiring now can handle just about anything. It's just a matter of how bright is too bright. If you have experience with your H4s, let me know what bulbs you're running and if you have any heat issues or anything like that with, uh, with your wiring. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next week.